Presence. Presence is the second facet of listening. In the midst of a performance, whether you are sharing or alone in the spotlight, presence is about using the power of silence and pauses to stay rooted in the moment as it occurs. When you're not speaking, you want to really concentrate and hear what's being said, as opposed to quickly jumping ahead to your next response. This habit requires its own level of persistent practice to tune into using your senses to slow down and absorb the verbal and nonverbal language of your counterparts. You will never have a particular moment again, so it's worth the investment to fully experience it in real time. Presence helps make you a whole brain listener with greater empathy and engagement. Improving presence improves individual communications. The auditory neuroscientist Seth Horowitz, author of The Universal Sense, How Hearing Shapes the Mind, wrote in the New York Times, listening is a skill that we're in danger of losing in a world of digital distraction and information overload. And yet we dare not lose it. Because listening tunes our brain to the patterns of our environment faster than any other sense, and paying attention to the non-visual parts of our world feeds into everything from our intellectual sharpness to our dance skills. Fortunately, you can train your listening. It's a skill like any other if you focus on improvement, that is. Train yourself, when listening, to clear your mind of anything other than what is being said to you. Don't plan your response. Don't judge what you're hearing. Don't just listen to the words. Listen for the emotional undercurrent, listen to the confusion in the thought process, and to the pacing and tone and inflection, and you'll actually hear what's being said. This is why later in the book we'll also focus on managing the pace and speed of your speech. If you are speaking without pausing, it's likely that you're not listening to what the audience needs from moment to moment. If you are always talking, you aren't reacting. And our reactions are hugely powerful aspects of communication. Backstage columnist Craig Wallace, who has written frequently about presence, says, Real listening is the kind that requires you to clear your adult mind and focus exclusively on the person right there in front of you and what he or she has to say, the kind in which you allow the person's words and thoughts to penetrate your heart and mind and then let your reactions to those words emanate purely and powerfully from your eyes as your face relaxes from its neutral curtain and becomes alive with expression. Real listening is about listening as a form of communication that is just as dynamic as speaking and is appreciated as such. Presence isn't just a practice for actors, Zen monks, or yoga teachers. Think of professional athletes and the ability certain players have to get into the zone to inhabit the moment that allows their skills to be fully expressed with effortless flow unhampered by any distractions and stay in the zone no matter the distractions. When I'm giving a speech, I can actually watch myself doing it. An amateur may walk off stage and say, I have no idea what I just said. But a professional knows exactly what she did every step of the way. Not only is she performing, she is actually observing her performance in real time. This is a powerful experience. It's a high-level skill that you will develop over time. You don't need to be a professional to do so. Paying attention with all your senses. When you are present, you also begin paying attention with all your senses. Consider a deal meeting or job interview where you are entering that particular room or office, most likely for the first time. You want to notice, what is the size of the room? What does your counterpart's desk or table suggest to you? What is the layout of the workplace? What are the other people wearing? If you're being interviewed by an executive who looks exhausted, makes poor eye contact while slurping a massive cappuccino with a half-eaten sandwich on his desk, these are all real facts that you should notice as they will affect your performance. If you walk through a workplace and notice people moving briskly, exhibiting confidence and energy, grouping up informally for a casual meeting, this is valuable data as well. Listening isn't just something you do with your ears. When I am giving a speech, in addition to observing myself, I'm listening to the audience with my ears, eyes, and body. When I see people taking notes, I know they're resonating with a point I made and I know that I need to pause so they don't miss what I'll say next. If I sense a touch of fatigue or feel they're getting restless, I'll get them up on their feet and have them play a game. If there's a glaring technical glitch, I'll openly address it. If it's hot in the room, I'll try to fix it. 
Showing empathy for the audience means I'm paying attention to how they are listening and what they are feeling. It's the difference between awareness and a lack thereof. If you're not aware that your mic is too loud or if there's no mic and you're speaking too softly, you'll lose the room pretty quickly. Think of this heightened approach to listening as a long-distance kind of pitching and catching. Let's say you and I are having a long toss, so to speak, talking one-on-one, -on -one, but we're 50 yards away from each other. After I say my lines, as a listener, I will wait to see if you caught what I said, and that means not only seeing the ball hit your glove, but listening for the thwack sound. I will then pause to ensure that you have caught the ball before I continue. The same technique applies when speaking to a small group of people or even a large audience. In short, listen to your audience and give your words some time to sink in before going on to your next point. Aesthetic Awareness As you become a more accomplished performer, you will be ready to move on to a more advanced stage of listening that involves aesthetic awareness, a performer's sixth sense of how they are being perceived and how their audience is responding as they use the stage, deliver their presentation, and interact with the people and situations around them. You can do this in a job interview or negotiation or any of life's important performances. Experience and dedication result in a new ability. You will see yourself as the audience sees you. As I mentioned above, an experienced and well-rehearsed performer sees, feels, and hears everything that's going on in the room around her and can also see herself while she's performing. It's the ability to keenly observe yourself while you're in the moment. It may be a hard concept to grasp when you haven't experienced it, but if you focus on the techniques I'm giving you to stay in the moment, you'll eventually know it yourself. It's powerful. 